My name is Paul Thorner. I'm 89 years old. You're 89 years old? I was 89 last month in April, April 28th. You're extraordinary, Paul, and I can I can testify because I've just had lunch with you that you are totally on the ball, have every marble going. Can you, Paul, share with us what's going on in the last couple of years of your life? Uh, oh, yes, I was married to a, a girl, a pretty girl I met on the trolley a Friday afternoon coming home from Brooklyn College. We talked for a while. She lived across the street from me. We knew of each other's existence, but we weren't friends. But after that, I kept looking for her in school, and eventually we met each other. We were married for 63 years, and she passed away three years ago. And the New York Times Sunday Magazine section has a feature called Lives. <laughs> And I decided I would write a story about my wife and myself and how we met. And I sent it in and it wasn't accepted, which I understood. Everybody gets rejected many, many times. But it was a stimulant for me to uh, write. And uh, I've written poetry, I've written vignettes, I've written short stories. I've taken several classes. And right now I belong to a very lovely writers group. We meet once a week on Friday. It's conducted by a published poet. It includes several published writers, a couple of doctors, some professors, and ordinary people like myself. And it's very nice to feel that when I complete something, I've done something worthwhile. So you, at the age of 87, after, after suffering this loss, took up a whole new, a whole new adventure, a whole new medium. You started doing something you hadn't done before. Well, I hadn't done it. In fact, as I have at home, a copy of a paper I wrote in 1942 when I was a senior in college and the professor gave me an A and I have the original paper and when I mentioned it to my kids recently they said you still got a paper you wrote in 1942 and I said yes I, I thought it would be worthwhile to keep in any case that was the last writing I did until I moved down to Florida and joined the, the monthly paper which we have and I've written a a column called uh, Village Vignettes, which is based on the Sunday Times, the Monday Times Metropolitan Diary. And I've also now gotten a feature which is called Thorner's Corner, which is my name. And I write a story there which is published once a month. So I, I have a feeling for doing something. I pick up subjects just by meeting people or an incident that happens to me or a red sweater that was in a drawer in my kitchen when I was a boy. The last story I wrote was called uh, Entanglements about kids uh, jumping into our bed on Saturday morning and we told stories and did arithmetic and then somebody tickled or poked another one and from that on the entanglements were with kicking and joking and smoking and not smoking. What, are the, what is this writing, what does it give you in your life? What is this, what is this well, now done for you? Uh, I feel good about it, you know, I like to see, I type it up on the uh, computer and I print it out and I look at it and I say, gee, you know, I did this. And then I send it to my kids and I send it to my grandkids and I send it to some of my friends. And I get a response saying, Paul, boy, that was a good story you wrote. And everybody likes praise. And and it's published in your lo in, in the paper. Yes. So people come up to you in the village and, and probably you're sort of a celebrity. Yes, I'm a, sort of a celebrity. I, people know me. I've been there for many, many years. I've done other things in the village. I play tennis. And, uh, I did you play act. tennis? I don't play anymore. For a while I played tennis. I was on the A team. We won several tournaments and I won a doubles tournament one year many, many years ago. Uh, I played racquetball. I played paddleball. I did some foul shooting, won some championships there. I, I did things that an ordinary... You keep busy though? I keep busy now? Yes, I keep busy now. now Tell me, since your wife, who you love very much, died, have you found other companionship? Or you? Uh, I have a lady friend that I see. I've known her for many, many years. She lost her husband uh, a few months before I lost my wife. And we've gotten together and we see each other a couple times a week. Uh, 
we go to the shows, we go out to dine, we dance at the clubhouse, uh, we meet with other friends on occasion. Um, it's a, it's a, 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 a fair that's uh, beneficial for both of us. We have somebody who cares for what, each other. Okay, Paul, I want, to, I want, I mean, you're really inspirational because at 89, sort of inventing this whole new world for yourself, and most people sit back and go, I'm too old. Can you give people out there at any age, because I have women 50 writing in me, what, three pieces of advice on how do you stay engaged, active, and I think that's why you feel as young as you do, is this engagement with the world. How, can you give us three pieces of advice? Three the Paul Thorner way of getting through to 89 like you are? Well, for one thing, I think you should have a positive attitude. We're here, we're here for only for a short period of time. If you're 89, you only have a few more years left. But you should enjoy your life. You should try to do things which will give you a sense of accomplishment. Uh, you should always try to be good, be kind to people, which is one of my mottos, I do unto others. Um, and find some activity it could be anything. It could be writing, it could be dancing, it could be bowling, it could be uh, going out to lunch with somebody else. Uh, having, uh, We belonged to book clubs for many years. So we met once a month reading a book and discussing it and then having coffee and cake. Uh, there's lots of ways that one can do it, but rather than just don't sit home and, and mope, uh, make something of your life. What about, I want to ask you one piece of advice. What, no, that's brilliant because the music is coming on. I'm not going to hear you. Paul Thorner, you're an inspiration. And we've got this bagpipes coming here, so we're going to say goodbye. And, and God bless you. Thank you very much.